autumn has arrived. The leaves are changing colors and the air is growing crisp. It's chicken pot light time again. St. Paul's United Church of Christ, located at the heart of the cellars of the will once again be serving their famous Pennsylvania Dutch chicken pot. While this year's pot light dinner will not be in person, it will continue to provide the community with the same home cooked pot prepared by the same church members who have served this meal for over a decade. Purchasing your pot pie dinner is easy. Simply visit our website. St. Paul's UCC. Click on the It's Chicken Pot Pie Time tab located in the upper right hand corner. Then click on the link for the ordering page to select how many quarts of chicken pot pie and pints of pickled cabbage you wish to purchase. Feel free to purchase more than one of those for you as well as the food that offers you around. Proceed to check out the complete menu for your credit or debit card. Distribution. Place in front of the church at 104 Grand Street, Salisbury, Saturday, November 13th, between 4 and 7 p.m. We thank you in advance for supporting St. Paul's and hoping you enjoy our famous chicken pot.
On this rainy, damp, chilly morning, we gather. We gather as God's children. We are blessed for whether we gather from our homes this morning from this area or whether we're gathering from this sanctuary. We are warm and we have a place in which to gather. It is comforting to be together as God's children this morning here at St. Paul's United Church of Christ at 104 Green Street in Sellersville, Pennsylvania. And as children of God, we are ever mindful that it is even much more than a rainy, damp, chilly morning for our brothers and sisters in Christ in Florida dealing with mass destruction, dealing with the loss of life because of the natural disaster of Hurricane Ian. And so even though I know that they are probably unable to tune in, being without power and many modes of communication, our hearts and our prayers are with you. You are not forgotten. And we will find some way to support you in this time of loss. And so whether we gather once more from our homes or from this beautiful sanctuary, we begin our type, time of worship with greeting one another. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you. As we enter into this time of worship, I am delighted that Mary Beth has agreed to be our lay liturgist for several Sundays throughout the month of October. Um, if anyone else is interested in taking some of those off Sundays that Mary Beth cannot be here, um, please let me know. Be in contact with me. But I invite those that are gathered in person to please stand as you are able as Mary Beth leads us in our responsive call to worship. Good morning. Good morning. We are not possible without you, God. We are the products of those who came before. We influence those who come after. You bind the generations to one another. We offer the treasures we find in you to one another. Passing them down through the ages, hear us as we worship you. Please join us in singing our opening hymn, God is Here, as we, are, as we your people meet. It's in the New Century Hymnal number 70.
gather congregation may be seated. My brothers and sisters in Christ, we are called to examine our faithfulness to God's covenant with us. God in whose presence we gather promises us grace and pardon when we acknowledge our weakness and shame. Together, let us confess our sin to Almighty God as we approach God's heavenly throne of grace. Let us pray. Gracious God, we come before you as bearers of a faith for which we are not always known. Sometimes we shrink from the gift entrusted to us as if it is the least part of ourselves, as if passing luxuries matter more, as if faith has no real weight in the scheme of things. Forgive us our unfaithfulness. Forgive us for our turning from your gifts. Call us back to life in you today and every day. Amen. God is merciful and forgiving. Through the revelation of Jesus Christ, we are assured that God sees us from afar and greets us with tender mercy when we return to God. Therefore, my brothers and sisters in Christ, let us be at peace with ourselves, with God, and with each other. Amen. breaking of bread 
Christians all around the world are going to be taking communion. And as we do, we know that God will be here and there with us. Now, we typically think of communion as the bread and the cup of juice or the cup of wine. But here right now at St. Paul's, we take communion a little bit differently. We do it in the form of our celebration cups. And the celebration cup is a little bit different because instead of bread, we have a little wafer, like a little piece of a cracker. And it's right inside of the top layer of our celebration cup. And after you take that out, then we take it as part of that part of the communion service. Then we'll flip it over and we'll peel the lid off and we can have the cup of juice too. But I want you to know that it doesn't matter what form communion takes, whether it's a piece of bread, whether it's a big loaf of bread, like they might do in other countries around the world, might be little pita bread, like they do in the Hispanic nations, or whether it's just a little tiny cracker wafer inside our celebration cups, it's still the same thing. That bread, that wafer, that cup of juice or wine, it represents Jesus' body and blood from when he died on the cross to take away our sins, those bad things that we do. So today, just like Jesus taught us to do, we are going to take communion as a congregation. We're going to pray over it, and then we're going to eat it and drink it. And as we do, we know that God will be present with us because God is now here. God is always here, but we're going to really pay attention to him being present with us during that and like I said, today, not only our church here at St. Paul's in Sellersville, Pennsylvania, but people all around the world, in every church around the world, people are going to be taking communion too because today is known as World Communion Sunday. It's a day where everyone in every church, in every city, in every country, in every continent around the world, every single person will be taking communion. And as they take their communion, they will know that God is present with them, that God is now here. And as we take our communion today, we will do it in memory of Jesus' death on the cross, and we will be grateful for all that he has done for us. We're going to close in prayer now. Would you pray with me? Repeat after me. Dear God, Today we thank you for being in the bread that we eat and in the cup that we drink. Help us to see that you are now here. Amen. Our scripture lesson this morning comes from 2 Timothy, chapter 1, verses 1 through 14. Paul, an apostle of Christ Jesus by the will of God, for the sake of the promise of life that is in Christ Jesus, to Timothy, my beloved child. Grace, mercy, and peace from God the Father and Christ Jesus our Lord. I am grateful to God whom I worship with a clear conscience, as my ancestors did, when I remember you constantly in my prayers night and day. Recalling your tears, I long to see you so that I may be filled with joy. I am reminded of your sincere faith, a faith that lived first in your grandmother, Lois, and your mother, Eunice, and now, I am sure, lives in you. For this reason, I remind you to rekindle the gift of God that is within you, you through the laying of, on my hands. 
For God did not give us the spirit of cowardice, but rather a spirit of power and of love and of self-discipline. Do not be ashamed, then, of the testimony about our Lord or of me, his prisoner, but join with me in suffering for the gospel, relying on the power of God who saved us and called us with a holy calling, not according to our works, but according to his own purposes and grace. This grace was given to us in Christ Jesus before the ages began, but it has now been revealed through the appearing of our Savior Christ Jesus, who abolished death and brought life and immortality to light through the gospel. For this gospel I was appointed a herald and an apostle and a teacher, and for this reason I suffer as I do. But I'm not ashamed. For I know the one in whom I have put my trust, and I am sure that he is able to guard until that day what I have entrusted to him. Hold to the standard of sound teaching that you have heard from me in the faith and love that are in Christ Jesus. Guard the good treasure entrusted to you with the help of the Holy Spirit living in us. Amen. Holy wisdom, holy word, thanks be to God. <clears throat> Writing from a Roman prison from which he doesn't expect to be released, Paul testifies to the gospel message that he has long proclaimed. And he is appealing to Timothy in this letter, this young believer, this disciple, this follower of Christ, colleague of Paul's, to continue that proclamation, Con to continue making known publicly the message of God's love and the gift of salvation through Jesus Christ. I don't know if we can imagine, but we can try. Try to imagine Paul's grief as he sits in a dark and cold prison cell. We can imagine him grieving many things. Followers who have deserted him. His awareness of an ongoing conflict with the larger Christian community. And his knowledge of people turning away from faith. Sadly, maybe that's not too hard to imagine. And yet, even in the face of his nearing death, Paul appears anyway to be surprisingly calm. Though we are told now he is ill, he is isolated, probably growing more physically tired and weak. Yet, if not in words, at least in the spirit is this sense of joy for Paul. And before his death, this feeling of being compelled to reach out with encouragement and support to this young colleague. In the letter, he is affirming his calling. We got to talk about what it means to be called today in Sunday school. And Holly, I so enjoyed our time together with our six little girls as we begin Sunday school in October. Paul is talking about his call, affirming that he is an apostle and a teacher. 
And he is calling upon Timothy to carry on his legacy, urging him as a leader in the church to rekindle, meaning to renew, to reawaken, to revive his faith by trusting and relying on the spiritual heritage that has been gifted to him. Gifted to him by not only his biological family, by his mother and grandmother, but also by his family of faith. Gifted to him by Paul himself. In reading several commentaries, it is said that this is one of the most personal letters that Paul has written to anyone any church, any leader. It is a letter of personal encouragement to Timothy in a time of uncertainty. He writes to Timothy as a beloved child in the family of faith, recalling the grace given to both of them in Jesus Christ. And towards the end of the letter, urging Timothy to guard, to protect what has been entrusted to him. We need to recognize that in this letter, the church, not just Timothy, but the church of Jesus Christ, is being called to remain faithful. To remain faithful to the knowledge of God's grace that they then and we now have received. And to demonstrate, to show that faith by passing it on. Not just in the here and now, but from one generation to the next and to the next. Faith is the good treasure, the good treasure to be guarded, to be shared, to be passed on. We can only imagine what this letter might have meant to Timothy. But again, we need to recognize that this letter from Paul is timeless. It is significant. It has much relevance for the church of Jesus Christ today. We are all called. We are all called in word and action and deed individually and as a church to share this good treasure It is a legacy that has been passed on to us that we are responsible now to pass it on to the next generation. Faith endures. It endures through adversity, again as shown and demonstrated by Paul's testimony from prison. If he can give testimony to this good treasure from prison, I'm sure you and I today can give powerful testimony of this good treasure, of our faith, of what God is doing in our lives through his love and through his grace. We are called to understand that faith doesn't make light of any hardship any distress, any suffering that may come into our lives. But that this good treasure, this faith endures. The faith that we have lives on. The faith that we have sustains us, carries us, keeps us going as we are undergoing any time of trial.
We did not read the gospel lesson for today in, in Luke's gospel, chapter 17, verses 5 to 10. The disciples demand that Jesus increase our faith may easily give us a false impression about faith that many of us still wrestle with today. We will notice that today's letter doesn't instruct us to increase our faith, but to simply share our faith with others. To pass on the legacy that has been passed on to us, even faith the size of a mustard seed. Maybe we find it easier to focus, like the early disciples, on strengthening our own faith rather than on focusing on sharing our faith with others. And yet, sharing the good treasure, the treasure of faith, the good news that we have learned, my brothers and sisters in Christ, that is an essential part of our call as Christians. In Feasting on the Word Bible Commentary, one of the commentaries I like to explore in preparation for a Sunday morning, Olive Elaine Hanat writes her powerful understanding of today's letter. And she says, Paul's fear that Timothy will be ashamed and not tell others of his faith reminds us that this good news is always one generation away from extinction. Paul's fear that Timothy will be ashamed and not tell others of his faith, reminds us that this good news, this good treasure, is always one generation away from extinction, from not existing folks. If one generation, she says, becomes ashamed of the gospel and does not risk testimony, how will the next generation know? This seems to be the ultimate concern here. At the end of his life, Paul needs Timothy to carry on for him. She goes on to say that parishioners who had grandparents who passed on certain traditions or family treasure before their death can understand Paul's intention. And she concludes by saying, Churches take this responsibility seriously when we provide Christian education classes to pass along knowledge of the scriptures and faith to all ages. In addition, we hope to transmit a living faith that moves beyond creeds and memorization of scripture. But how? You and I, in our testimony, we will show how we tried. We will show that we did not want to keep this good treasure hidden. A treasure that moves beyond any financial decisions we may have before us, any disagreements that may come between us. This letter that Paul wrote is for us, folks, to guard this good treasure, to guard our faith. In guarding it, we share it, we give testimony. We find ways to share the good news of Jesus Christ with every generation. Today, though not, by all churches, World Communion Sunday is observed in many parts of the world. On this day more than any other, 
Christians around the world are symbolically gathered at the common table. These symbols of bread and cup, they too are our treasures. They are treasures that Christ gave us to remember him, to strengthen us, to encourage us, to not grow weary, to not feel isolated. God calls us, each and every one of us, to approach all of church life in good faith. From organizing new ministries to evaluating existing ministries, all done in good faith. All because God calls us to share this good treasure. As we gather at this table today, as we break the bread, as we pour the cup, open your hearts, open your minds, listen as we share with the children today for God's voice, not just us calling out to God but to listen for God's call on our lives. And all glory be to God this day and every day. Amen. As we share in the good treasure here at St. Paul's United Church of Christ, we are busy in our community life. We have much joy of faith to share with one another and to share with our community. I hope by now you have received the October newsletter. It is filled with so much good news. It is filled, as you will see on the calendar, with so many reminders that I hope you put on your own calendar. Next Sunday, Robin, am I correct? Penridge Crop Walk will take place. Um, there have been changes, and we do ask that you pay attention to those changes uh, where the Golden Mile will take place. Um, you will get instructions when you sign up for the crop walk, when you register um, for the walk. But if you have any questions, um, please see Robin today after worship. Um, she is even wearing that Crop Hunger Walk t-shirt, just in case you don't know who Robin is. <laughs> Thank you, Robin, for all the work that you have put into that. Um, when, when things change and shift, um, it becomes increasingly um, more difficult uh, to make sure we're communicating that as we need to. I'm also mindful, um, and I'm hearing numbers that are rising as Rampax uh, continues to gear up and start serving area schools in a new school term in the Penridge School District. Um, if for those that do not know, maybe those that are tuning in for the first time, uh, Rampax does provide weekend food and snacks throughout the church, uh, throughout the school year, um, wanting to ensure um, that no child is hungry um, over the weekends in our school district. Um, we are thankful for having a ministry with fish um, that uh, Brenda watches over for us, uh, another ministry that we can ensure that families are being fed um, throughout the year. I think we're all paying attention to the economy and what's happening. And so Don and I was not surprised by the increase of those numbers. And I'm sure you weren't either, um, nor will the board be. But again, um, just prayers and support are so appreciated um, with all these ministries. It's chicken pot pie time. Um, everything is in place for that, from receiving phone messages to things being able to be ordered online, email blasts going out. Uh, Donna is here, so if you have any questions about the chicken pot pie uh, dinner that will be takeout only, um, please see her also after worship today. Donna, 
I think you had another announcement about CCC to please sign up. Next two weeks, um, there are no names filled in. Um, Donna and I did such a good job that we both brought CCC um, for today. So God bless you, Donna, for um, allowing me to step on toes uh, here and there along the way. Um, so there is plenty for CCC today, so make sure that you do pop over into Fred's Hall and uh, feast on all those goodies that are over there. We pause and also remember uh, the need for prayers in this time as, as we gather. Jackie, our Christian sympathy is extended to you and your family. Um, Jackie's brother-in-law passed away on Friday. And um, we just told her sister, Carol Ann, um, in, in prayer also, Jackie, during this time of grieving a loss of loved one. Um, I need to lift up my brother in Christ, Fritz, um, as he faces some health challenges, um, and the family um, as they maneuver through those waters together. We pray for recovery efforts um, that are in place as we began our time of worship being mindful of those uh, experiencing severe destruction, um, not just loss of property, but also loss of life um, from Hurricane Ian. Um, it just didn't know when to stop, uh, apparently pushed through Florida and then up the East Coast, um, causing some more damage there. But um, reading the stories about Florida, it is just truly heartbreaking. I have also been inundated um, with all kinds of possibilities for us to respond um, from disaster ministries from the United Church of Christ, um, Church World Service. Um, so we will stay in conversation um, about that uh, and find a way that we can best support the efforts um, that are going on for our brothers and sisters in Christ in Florida. I do have a prayer card um, that I received from uh, Brenda, Brenda Clark, uh, Brother Terry Weidemoyer, we lift up in our prayers, um, has just been diagnosed with stage 4 lung cancer. And also her niece, uh, Stephanie DeLugas Acton, um, facing some real serious uh, women's health issues. Um, again, mindful that as God's family, we do not need to know one another personally to pray for one another. God hears our prayers when we call out to him. I also want to take time and pause uh, to lift up a former employee of St. Paul's United Church of Christ. Uh, Stacy is with us this morning. She was on staff as our church secretary for nine and a half years. Um, I had the pleasure of serving by her side for three years, even though I kept making it three and a half. I don't know what that really said about you and I, Stacy. Um, but there is much appreciation um, extended to you um, for everything that you did, everything we knew that was going on, but also a lot of little odd jobs behind the scenes, pulling a lot of pieces together um, for a lot of ministries um, here at St. Paul's. Um, and so for just a second, if you could pop forward, um, I have something I want to present you with. And I have no microphone on, so sorry, those that are tuning in virtually. But Stacy, this is for you. Um, enjoy. And again, really, I just thank you. Did I miss anything? Did anybody have anything that they came to me before church? I was shuffling around notes and trying to make sure I got it all. Anything else? What is that, Jim? Amendment. Absolutely. 
I even had that at the very end before the closing benediction, that we will meet immediately after worship um, to have our congregational meeting uh, to review, discuss, vote on the proposed amendment to the endowment. Mary Beth, would you come and lead us with our invitation to generosity? My favorite time of worship. Forgot I had that mask on. God has given us good gifts, the gift of light, the gift of love, the gift of mercy, the gift of this good earth, our home. The gift of teachers, the gift of presence, the gift of people to love, the gift of the call to serve, and the gift of hope for the future of God's world. God has given us good gifts. Let us return for God's use a portion of what God has given us to further God's purpose in this world. Holy One, may our hearts be attentive to your voice. Open our eyes to the needs of the world. Strengthen us with the mission and spirit of this faith community. Accept and use this offering towards furthering the reality of your realm on earth through Jesus Christ. Amen. The gathered congregation may be seated.
Let us open our hearts, our minds, our ears to the call of God as he calls us to this holy table, as we remember our brothers and sisters around the world that too are breaking bread and pouring cup today. Let us pray. One world spinning freely, yet too often fractured and confined. We too often find ourselves broken, alone, feeling powerless. Remind us, O oh God, of the words written long ago to Timothy, encouraging him to rekindle, rekindle his faith. Spark your fire within us, the fire that energizes and renews and brings new life to us and the world. As a Samaritan paused to give Jesus thanks, so we gather on this day, people from around the world, to celebrate Christ's presence in our midst. We use bread from our culture as a potent symbol that you, our God, are the God of all people, that your love reaches not only us, but others besides. Open us to listen to them. Open us to learn from them. Open us to be present for them, not in patronizing and colonial ways, but in loving, equal and Christ-like ways. This day we take communion with all the world and in so doing declare that Christ is present for all people, challenging unjust systems with God's challenge and promise. As we break bread and share a cup, may we remember the Christ present with us through all these years and across all this world present with us as we rededicate ourselves to you. Hear us now, O oh Lord, as we continue to pray in one voice, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. We recall the supper of Jesus and his companions before his arrest. During the meal, Jesus took bread and blessed it and broke it and said, take eat, this is my body. And Jesus took a cup. Gave thanks and passed it to each saying, take drink. This is the cup of the new covenant. By the power of your Holy Spirit, weave us into a body of testimony in the life you give. With all those who have gone before us and all those yet to come, shape us into a parable, O oh God, of your great heavenly banquet. Come, Holy Spirit, in preparation to share in this time of communion, let us sing together as we gather at your table.
here in this sacred space of the sanctuary, we take our celebration cups. If you are viewing from home, you are invited to have your bread and your cup ready for this time of communing together as God's family. We peel off the top layer that removes the small piece of bread. As I present the bread to you as the body of Christ, broken for you, take and eat. And removing the other seal, we reveal the cup. The cup of the new covenant poured out for you and for me for the forgiveness of your sins and mine. Take and drink. As you are able, please stand. And again, if you are gathering from home, please join us in our prayer after communion. Let us pray. Spirit of life, love, grace, God, you have ushered us in, fed us, blessed us, and renewed us. Guide us now as we go forth that our lives may bear witness to your gracious miraculous and everlasting love. Amen. Before the sending forth, you are again reminded, church members, please stay for the congregational meeting that will be held immediately following this time of worship that we can talk about, vote on the proposed amendment to the endowment. Also, after the congregational meeting, please find your way to Fred's Hall so you can enjoy much cookies, coffee, and conversation. Please share with me in our response of sending forth. Go forth in the promise of God's steadfast love. We go forth in the promise of God's new mercies. Go forth as bearers of faith, ancient and new. We go forth in the kingdom of faith of our prayers. May your path shine with light and love. Amen. And let us sing together, Great is your faithfulness. <laughs> 